Victory feels exhausting. This is podcast episode number 42 of the podcast 3.0. Now the podcast 2.0, George, was that up to 170? Was that over 200? I don't know. I lost track. He didn't write it down on the piece of paper, George. Okay, well, it's blank. But it sounds like... Well, I, you know, do you ever wonder if 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 the if the if the, 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 the 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 news guy on Fox, if you ever wonder if his papers in his hand, you know, the pen, if they actually has stuff on it? Well, I just probably get up and spit it. I I I don't look down. I don't. Re- I've I've written entire speeches and just gotten up and not had the speech memorized, but recite the entire thing. I don't. I don't get the concept of having, I mean, I can read news. This is boring. I wanted to talk about Ophanim Eye. I, look, I'm, I'm finished. It's done. It's a novel. I started it probably five years ago, six years ago. I wrote, the, no, I believe it was 2012. Wrote the thing. It was a page turner, some fun stuff and ideas, but just lots of just lecture tone, which a lot of books end up being. Revamped the thing, edited the thing, just for... 87,996 words, George. So is that 88? I don't know. Not quite. Live. Uh, Not quite 88. So I'm not quite live. I'm not quite the other side of the world. And I'm not quite to 88. But I, I tell you, folks, it's been a year. My theology book that I started 15 years ago as a college assignment, as a senior seminar college assignment blew up into 90,000 words and I finally edited and finished that back uh, several months ago, I guess. Yeah, mere theology. And then I did this English website, print right, which was totally exhausting. I'm thinking about going back to a little project with that, but it's mostly done. That was absolutely, that was months and months and months making. And then I did that RGB video, which took at least 80 hours and most of it was incredibly monotonous. I, I thought I almost... I thought I was going to have to go to the hospital there from how exhausted I was. And then now I've got another 88, almost, not quite 88,000 word novel. Listen, I'm excited about this opening memoirs thing. It's, I, I like, I, I was excited reading. Normally I don't get excited reading my work. Well, then you know what? I'll retract that. I love listening to myself, but the, the older one, like the original memoirs of Ophanine, which was the five-year-old one, I, I was, I'd read it, I was embarrassed. I was like, I wrote this? This is so bad. Like, I can't believe I wrote this. And then I read this one and I was like, you know, that's a fun story. Boring or fun, it explains, it, it explains the backstory. It explains our situation from heaven's perspective. The way history played out uh, before the Bible, you know, why there's the devil in the first place, his choice, how God responded, where we came from, where the power is, quote unquote, why bad things happen, why God lets bad things happen. Why does, why does God wait to answer our prayer at the last minute if he doesn't answer at all? You know, what, just... How, how is God good with all the stuff that goes on? That's answered simply by looking at the angel's backstory. And if you know the basic teachings of the Bible, the basic teachings about God, how he works, different appearances when angels would appear to people, um, some about the names from the book of Enoch, but not really a lot of theology from that, just names. If you're familiar just even a little bit with some basic Sunday school teaching, even if you had basic confirmation as Lutheran or a Catholic, then you'll read the novel and you'll say, you know what? That that agrees with with, with mainline uh, Catholic and evangelical uh, theology. Any 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 Bible based worldview, and it makes sense. Now I get it why God did that, and it's it's nothing new. I didn't already know, but it, seeing it as a story, it just makes sense. So if you're struggling with those questions, it comes out tomorrow, October 17. JesseSteel.com Books has uh, information on how to get it. Smashwords is going to have it updated, but I, I did some last minute updates, so 
if you're doing other bookstores, you know, smashwords.com is, it has the, has the, the main current version. But if you're going to read it, if you want to buy it in iBooks or at Barnes & Noble, you can buy it now, but uh, there will be updates that I've submitted that will be showing up over the next week. So you can start reading it, and then the updates, the edits, the last-minute edits I made only affected the end of the book. So I, I, think, I think the way that works, George, is, I mean, it, it happens on my Logos reader, but you're reading the book, and, and you, know, you open it up one day, and then it does its little sync thing on the Wi-Fi, and then you get this message, there's an update available for this book. Would you like to download the update? You click download, and then it fixes the recent grammatical errors or whatever. I think that's how that works. So you buy the book, you don't lose anything, you'll get the updates when they arrive. But there are updates that will be pushed by the end of the week. There, I explained that. Well, I, well, I did a pre-release date thing and locked myself into a schedule to make sure that it got done. And I'll tell you what, I am, I am shifting my focus away from this writing. I am not writing any more eBooks until I get my own CMS software written. Unless I've got a major change of, of events in life and something unravels that commitment, that's my commitment so far. I guess I could get married and have kids and then, you know, something changes. But barring getting married and having kids, I'm not writing any more books until I write the software that I write with and share it with you and anyone. For, for anything, for writing blog posts, for writing anything. Uh, there we go. I'm, I'm totally shifting focus over to software development and I've finally gone out and registered a .com, which is like the official starting of anything, right? All the .com does is point to my, the People's Party book. That's all that it does. The, the, the namespace, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, the .com, all of them are the same. People's, the number three, party. People's three party. Dot com. Now, I'm sure the People's Party will probably get some other website in the future, but it's something to launch with. It's a unified namespace, dot com, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and I can discuss, engage, and talk about it. I am serious about the People's Party. Look, I've got friends that are public funding liberals, I, and I, I, don't, I don't mean they're not social let's go be hippie liberals. They're liberals because they like public funding. And I, and I get that. I, I understand the value of railroads and stuff. I, really, I don't believe that public funding does everything like some people do, but I do believe public funding is vital and important more than most conservatives like to say. And I've got friends that I like and I understand, and they're scared, genuinely scared about Trump. I'm not, but they are. And I just don't like this state that the country's in. And so I'm, I'm, I'm just being kind of silent on the Trump thing. I'm happy for conservative stuff that ha- for conservative things that happen because I'm a conservative. But after this, folks, after Trump, he, I believe two terms, two terms is likely. It's not, I'm not being clairvoyant here, but I think two terms. I mean, I thought Obama was going to be one term. I was worried Bush was going to be one. T- Every president we think is going to be only one term. All, all suggestions have shown, it, folks, it's probably going to be eight years of Trump. And when we're done, I want the People's Party, and I'm gearing up towards that. Out of time, I need to get to a very related point. Anyone can think the sky is falling when the other guy wins an election. Friends say what we don't like, we make baseless insults, then we complain about a divided nation. If you've enjoyed the same old bland, partisan, well-mannered non-progress for years, then a populist like Obama or Trump comes along to rub you the wrong way, well, anyone can go loopy. Some of us grow thick skin before others. Post-election conniptions are normal. Don't blame people for having them. Don't join them either. Spread some love. Focus on the problems in the bathroom mirror, not the rearview mirror. And that's the point. I'm Jesse Steele, jessesteele.com.